Hello, people. Welcome to Texas Truck Channel. I'm Brian. Texas Truck Channel. We're in California. I know. And this is California Craig. <laughs> and today we're driving the completely new, I'm not saying refreshed, I'm not saying anything to do with the old CX-9, completely new Mazda CX-90. This is our first drive. We're outside of San Francisco next to some type of fairgrounds, which look just fun for family duty. So we decided to film right here. This is the PHEV model. Come around here. As you can you tell right here, PHEV, and that's a plug-in electric hybrid. Or as Mazda says, PHEV. PHEV. Yeah. If you had the uh, Turbo S or the regular model, you would have the inline six. It would say inline six right there. Super cool. That video is coming up soon as well. Stay tuned. This is a premium plus and it has the 21 inch wheels. Let's check those out. So these are Falcons. They are totally quiet on the highway. They handle pretty well. 275, 45, 21s. That's a giant wheel, but it rides awesome. So I'm actually really impressed with that. The whole time I was thinking, do you really need 21s? Do you need 21s? Yeah, but Brian, see, uh, it's a silent core. Oh, so, that must yeah, have what it's it is. Silent core. It, yeah, uh, oh, it's not a loud core. Look, in all reality, um, we've we've driven this thing about 50 miles so far. We're gonna drive more in the driving section in just a minute, but they've been silent on the highway. Gosh, I'm impressed. And it rides great over city bumps and stuff. We haven't had any problems with that. So my concerns there have been squashed. So let's talk about looks. This thing to me has the corporate Mazda nose. And oh, before we get too far into it, Mazda's known for great headlights. These LEDs that track at night, so as you turn the steering wheel, they'll track left and right, and they have great, great projection. That's standard on every single CX-90. You don't have to get a package for these. They're all good headlights. The preferred plus, or the one we have right here, starts at $56,000. This was just a bit above that. Um, but this thing can be had for as low as 47,000 with a PHEV. So if you get PHEV, it's actually positioned as a medium trim um, between the regular turbo and the turbo S. So the cheapest you can get the CX-90 is gonna be $39,000 with no options. The cheapest PHEV is 47, this was about 56. They're all all wheel drive. And we'll talk about powertrain in just a minute, but back to the nose. I've already been told by people they either love or hate this thing. Hmm. I'm just gonna tell you right now, this is not gonna offend anybody. This doesn't seem too controversial to no, me. No, it really isn't. It's not controversial. You do keep this Mazda kind of theme, this, this bow coming down, but that's about it. It's kind of just shaped onto a bigger size vehicle. And also, come look at the profile. Go, go look, at, look at it this way. You see how long that is? Looks very rural drive-ish. Yeah, that's because it is. And because you can get an inline six with this. Again, more on that in a following video, but I can't believe that someone today has come out with an inline six turbo option in the era of small displacement turbos or electric. Hats off to Mazda for even doing it. It's incredible. So uh, back to looks, come around over here. You do get cladding. Okay, so there is not an off-road trim available now. There well, that, but, but this means you can off-road, Brian. Well, yeah, yeah. The, this is the Instagram threshold is what this <laughs> is. This means you can go camping and you can brush on some, actually, all joking aside, you can, you can brush up on some stuff and it'll protect your paint a little bit. It'll hit this outside edge first, uh, hopefully. And then also cladding down here. Now your chrome will be demolished. Yeah, but, but until then it looks cool. Until then it looks cool, and let's be honest, at Whole Foods, none of that matters anyways. <laughs> so come around, you do get body color matched um, door handles and you have the, Typical Mazda stuff that's really good. It folds mirrors when you lock it. You just put your hand in here. There's no button to push. It just works really well. Other brands have a not a button you gotta push. Don't do that. Just put your hand in. Like Ford and Mazda do that just right. There's make, the two that make do that it right. easy. Make, make it, easy. it easy. Roof rails, these are satin. And look, these things mean business. They've actually got mounting brackets and holes. You can put all kinds of accessories on here. And look, rooftop tent, Whole Foods parking lot. You're gonna be the coolest kid at school. Oh awesome. yeah. And a hybrid, you got all the green points. Oh, you do. Speaking of, oh, she's, she's locked. What's going on here? Hang Is on, there a button? Hang on. There's a button. Oh, there's a button. Uh, right there. Right there. Okay, okay. Fuel check. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's got a cap on it. Must be a made in Japan thing. Must be a made in Japan thing. But it has a holder for the cap, so that's a half point on that. The good so, news is you won't need that much. Moving around to the back. You do get a bit of a spoiler up here. I like that. The flat black theme continues, so it matches the other trim on the on the vehicle. Like you look sporty. Looks pretty good. I like it a lot. Coming down, you do have the typical Mazda badge, and it's chrome. This, and again, all-wheel drive. They're all all-wheel drive. Off-road. Off-road cred. And then Sky Active PHEV. E Sky Active. Oh, excuse me, E. Now, let me explain that E. That's going to be on the inline six as well. What that means is they all have some type of E component. So the inline six has a mild hybrid 48 volt system that's just sandwiched between the transmission and the engine. And this has an actual full on electric motor in between the two. It's just rated a little bit higher. I come to this side because it is a PHEV. Wait, there's another fuel door? 
So the fuel door. What? Because it's a plug-in uh, hybrid. Look at that. Okay, so you can do level one, level two. Somehow, right. if you hit a button. I can't get it off anyways. There's a cap for level yeah, yeah, two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you do level one, you plug it into a 110 outlet at home. It takes six hours to charge it to its max range. Well, it, most people work in more time than that or at home, so you can do it at work or home. That's pretty good. That's actually totally reasonable because that's just what you do. If you have a level two in your garage or anywhere else, maybe you go to the, the grocery store, it'll fully charge in an hour and a half. That's pretty good. Um, Let's talk about powertrain. Let's come to the front for that. All right, boys and girls, time for the important part, and that's where the power comes in. Yeah. Check it out. This is the eSky Active PHEV, and no, there is no turbo under here. I got to get that out of the way Wait, first. What? Yes. 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder, which means this puppy revs when you actually get into yes. it. Yes. And it's paired to a 68, is it kilowatt yes. motor that's sandwiched between the engine and transmission of this vehicle. And Why is that so important? That's a huge deal, which hang on, we'll get to that, get to that in a second. Okay, okay. The combined power of this is 319 369 with cheap fuel or 323 69 369 torque with premium fuel so just run the cheap fuel you won't feel four yeah. horsepower it won't make any difference at all in fact mazda recommends just run 87 in this the whole point of being cost efficient um it doesn't run the turbo on the na motor because it has an ev component that has a ton of torque anyways it makes the most sense to do that for cooling and packaging and cost and everything something that's cool about this the EV motor is sandwiched in between the engine transmission, which means there's not a front engine and then a separate electric motor like some PHEVs will do, like the uh, RAV4 Prime, for example, the Prius Prime, for example. They'll have a gas component hybrid in the front and then a separate EV motor in the back. When that happens, your driver dynamics can change as you're driving, and Mazda doesn't like that. They care about that driving dynamics and want to be consistent all the time. So when you're running in EV mode, it's actually just running that sandwiched motor through the transmission, through the all-wheel drive system, and that never changed. Your torque split is just like if it's running on gas or if it's the inline six. Huge points on that. We'll talk about this more in the driving, but we actually went on EV mode up to highway speeds and the gas motor never comes on. We basically drove 28 miles here on EV most of the time. Most of the time. And if we had driven without being morons in a press car, <laughs> it would have actually just been like cruise control. The gas motor never would have come on. A lot of hybrids today, I'm looking at Toyota and Lexus and really all of them, not them in particular, Above 28 miles an hour, outside of city environments, the gas motor kicks on no matter what you do, even in EV mode. Even when you tell it you want to be in that Exactly. Yeah. So you have a lot of control as a driver over this. Let's check out what we're looking at down here. I'm going to unlock the engine cover. Oh, and it folds up. Okay, hold on. i got to point something out here. This is a really big deal. Look back. Get on profile. That's the center axle what's, what's, on the hub. What's this? That is called a front mid engine, is what this is. Ooh, Most of the power plant Brad. is behind the front axle, and that means dynamics will be very good. Um, and look, this is just a longitudinally mounted 2.5 NA you would find in the Mazda 3 or anything else that's non turbo optioned. Also, look down here. See that steering rack? It is mounted on the front half of the axle, which means it's a front steer configuration, which helps with steering feel. That's a huge deal. And also, that motor down there. That's the power steering motor assist right here. It's not on the column. So your input on the steering shaft of the steering wheel is not uh, lessened because the motor is on the column. It's actually down here. You keep your leverage through the column, which is really cool. And because it's an inline, there's enough room for the steering rack on this side of the block. So it's not uh, blocked by a front wheel drive configuration. So if you had a front wheel drive layout, you would have the, it would be a rear steer setup which would lessen the driver's experience. Also allows that uh, upper control arm to be way over here. Yeah, let's look at that too. So you've also got, these are actually an aluminum hat for the, the strut damper right there. That's pretty cool. And a little bit of insight, this may have been intended for the Mazda 6 replacement mm -hmm. when this project started. Just gonna leave that there. All that aside, let's check out the interior. All right, Brian, time for the interior, but before we get open the rear hatch, I wanna point out we don't have a trailer hitch here because this is not the tow monster like the others will be. The others are rated at 5,000 pounds. We'll drive the Turbo S later. This one, the PHEV is only rated at 3,500. So know that if you're getting the PHEV, if you plan on doing towing a boat all the time, probably not the one you should get. But with but that out of the way. But in a pinch. Oh, it'll definitely tow mo what most people need. You can tow your lawnmower and do some lawn stuff. There you go. So back here, Brian, normal third row, decent amount of room. It's not the biggest, but it's not the lowest. It works. And then under here, you got a little storage for your charging cable, which um, it's interesting that it comes with that, and then of course spare tire tools and some other cubby holes. Sure. So, um, but Brian, I want to point this out right here. This is a 12 volt charger. Okay. And right here, Brian, it says 120 volt, 150 watts. So yeah. 150 watts. That's not like a, not that's, very much. That's like charging a laptop, maybe. Yeah, you charge a laptop. Phone. That's not very much. What about coffee? So um, and then, but Brian, there's another charger spot over here. You can see. Oh wait. Wait a minute. One five zero zero fifteen hundred watts. That is not a typo. 
That is not a typo. That is 1500 watts. You can do a lot of things with 1500 watts. So 1500 watts, now all of a sudden you're close to, you can probably run a few power tools if you really wanted to and some other things. You do a coffee pot, you're not gonna trip, the, trip anything. That's pretty cool. Most PHEVs, you don't get the advantage of that. Right. Like if you're in a Toyota or some other brands, it's just gonna say 400 watts. And you're like, what? That's all we get? Hipster points right there. Hipster points right there. This is gonna be a really cool overlander. All right, Brian, let's see if they do the uh, rear seats right. Pull the handle and it just goes down. Oh, oh wow, easy. there's no button. Okay, well, let's see if it comes up. You pull it, oh, and it just comes up. Okay, well, that's nice. Right, well, that's that's, easy. that's yeah, how like it's that. supposed to work. All right, sitting in the second row, this one actually has captain shares because this is a seven passenger layout. So it's three, two, two. You can get uh, some of the different trims. You can get, it's only six passengers, it's two, 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 which so you get a little bit more bolstering back there. So it's a little more comfortable if you do have to ride in the back. And then you can also get an eight passenger layout, which is probably the family uh, hauler. It would be three in the back. You get an out, another seat here for three and then two up front. That would get your eight passenger seating configuration. But before we go any further, Brian, plenty of room for water bottles. You got one, two, three spots. I can carry three water bottles right here in that, in that door. And then right here, I got a nice handy dandy little cup holder there. So I can do two more. I get all the vehicles have tri-zone climate control. That's right, all of the trim levels. So if you're worried about that, you get it in all of them. USB-C, USB-C. Um, yeah, heated seats, and then a brand peasant blockers that, oh, I could actually figure out on the first try, that's hard for me to do. But most importantly, Brian, this has got a pano and I've got room. Mm. Will you have room? Let's I'm see. I'm a little nervous. Get in here. Okay, this is me behind myself, by the way. Okay, okay. Okay. Not mm. terrible. I've seen, we've seen worse with a pano. Actually, you know what, I could, I could ride around on this. I'm touching a little bit. Yeah. But I can also read. You're not having to move your head. No, like usually I'm like this yeah. and most. Yeah. This is a pass. I'm gonna call this a pass. That's not bad. And you know, this is a cool pano. I mean, that's yeah. that's a pretty cool panoramic roof. Also, if I wanted to, I could recline the seat more. Oh yeah, good point. So yeah, with my seat here, I can I can I can recline back. I can get really comfortable, and then I can also go forward or back to give the people in the room in the back or myself room back here. That always makes it more handy. On to the captain's quarters, Brian's. I want to show you the gauge cluster first. We're going to start there because we got some cool stuff. This has got the digital gauge cluster, and we get different modes over here. I want to see to your right. Look in that little spot there. You can change to see uh, temp, coolant temp, safety, eye active safety sense, compass. You can turn it off if you don't want it too busy. But this is the part we really want to see because this one shows 50 miles per gallon. That's right, 50 miles per gallon. We've driven 30 miles, and we were doing a bunch of silly stuff getting here. We haven't used much. We could have gone here and it would have said 80. nothing. It would have said nothing potentially if I never actually got onto the gas because we would have driven it all electric. It caps out at 80. We, it's so good. We actually thought it was broken, Brian, yeah. and that it wasn't working. So pretty interesting. Um, you change those modes with my drive. You can go in EV mode and it really kind of keeps you in EV or you can drive around a normal sport. We're going to try those later. And off-road. And off-road mode. Pretty cool. So um, other than that, you get your traditional you know, dual zone climate controls, heated and ventilated seats in this particular trim, which is really nice. Wireless charging works. Um, interesting that they don't have USB-C up here, but they do have a 12 volt, but back here, Brian, we do have USB-C. You can actually play music, which is what we're doing right now is one of our sources, which is nice. Um, a little more room, controversial. Brian thinks there's maybe the same room as a CX-9. It's very similar to CX-9, but a little bit lower so that you don't hit your knee as much here. I think that's nice. Good sight lines. It seems to handle well, but more on the handling. Let's get it on the road, Brian, and let's see what it does. Let's uh, see if we can get a zero to 60 time and let's see how the ride and drive is. <laughs> All right, Brian, it's time for sport mode. Sport mode's activated. We're in the yep. Pahiv. Uh, let's go. Zero to 60, go, let's go. All wheel drive, launching good. Rev the 5,000 RPM, 6,000 RPM. Make some 40, weird noises. 50 and 60. In, do you want to guess? Uh, 7.2. 6.47. Whoa, really? Yeah. Wow. Okay, and so. Now, hold on. The battery is almost dead, by the way. Yeah, we really drained the battery. We have one mile left of juice on the battery. Right. right. We had 28 when we started, something like that. Correct. And uh, so I don't know if that would have made a difference. We don't know. We'll it have felt, this. It felt like it was helping. Again, this is a first drive. It felt like it was helping. We'll have this long term at some point. We'll yeah, we'll do sure. full barrage of testing back in Texas when we get it. We're in San Fran right now. But first test right out of the gate. That's, I did not expect 6.4. <laughs> not either. Less than they, six and a half. By the way, this is the eco one, not the fast one. Right. The fast one is coming up next. Yes. Okay, ride and drive. Yes, ride and drive. First of all, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna put it back to normal because it's holding revs a little bit. Um, driver position right off the bat, I've got headroom. 
plenty of it. The seat is very comfortable. Ventilated seats are a major plus. Um, Sight lines and visibility, spot on. Yes. Okay. The downside, and th this is a thing for me more than you, and most people are probably fine with it. The floorboard itself has like this upward approach for your feet, which is probably a safety thing, but it feels like it's about two inches too close. Yeah, I have zero problem with that, um, but I'm 5'9", you're 6'4", so that's a factor. Maybe it, people need to yeah, think about it. I don't it, know. I, don't, I would not buy it because of that, though. I just feel like okay. some of his competitors have a deeper foot well, and that's fine. The steering wheel feels great, like all Mazdas do, mm -hmm. um, and the P-Hev has been, as you can tell, quite impressive so far. Yeah, we had, didn't have a lot of expectations, to be honest, for the P-Hev. Sure. I, I, I mean, that's where I was at. Yeah, same here. Because um, I didn't expect that we would... On the drive here, Brian, we drove, we've driven 33 miles now and almost mostly on battery yeah, alone. Yeah, completely. So here's, and here's why that's important. T two things. One, we did that with a, we were in an EV car basically essentially for most of this drive. Right. With a standard automatic transmission. Yeah, so. That's nice. As we talked about a minute ago, the electric portion is using the same drive line that the gas motor uses. So it feels normal. It feels natural the whole time. Right. And then also the EV mode, and this is the first hybrid that we've ever had that will go EV mode up to highway speeds. Right. We were doing 75 miles an hour without the gas engine on, no problem. Right. And if you wanted to accelerate, then it would kick on, but then immediately go back right. off. Now they have the European style, BMW, Audi style kick plate yes. on the throttle. So you go 100% throttle and then there's a little extra, go click, click, click down. And immediately. And what that does is when you're in EV mode, it will keep EV only until you hit that kick down. Right. So you actually, as a driver, know exactly when you can make it engage. Like, oh, I got to pass them real quick. Right. I need some gas help, and it cranks up right away and does it. But it'll also the gas motor will just kick on on itself too if you have cruise control on and the load's heavy enough. And it can't the gas and right. it can't maintain. Gas will kick on, so it doesn't just completely destroy and drain your battery. Right. That's that's the reason there. So but here's why that's important. So some people live in the city; they will never drive over 20, 28, 30 miles. They can be in EV mode all day if they want. Yeah, for that person, this is an electric car. That, right. Like legitimately an electric that car. That can still go on a road trip across exactly. Texas or California. Exactly. Or people like me who have a 50 mile one way drive to work and then 50 miles back, I can essentially drive to work mostly in EV mode, then it will kick in the gas assist, and then I can go to work, I can charge in 110 volt, I work an eight hour shift, I can charge fully, I can drive home the same way. Right. I can essentially get 60 plus miles a gallon on a 100 mile round trip drive to work. In a three row crossover that can tow right. 3,500 pounds. Yes. And goes through a 16 6.4. That's impressive. I'm legitimately excited about a PDF. It's the first hybrid I've been happy with. Right. We'll decline that. This, oh, this is the screen. screen. Oh, that worked. Yeah. Wait a minute. All right, infotainment, let's talk about that real quick. Yes. <laughs> so, good timing for that. When using that, the native navigation, the touchscreen does not work. It doesn't yeah. do anything right. much. It's just idiotic. I don't know why it's doing that. But you do have the good, uh, was it their, their scroll wheel, what yeah, do you yeah. call it? Scroll and volume. Scroll yeah. and volume, that's intuitive, just like every model yep. we've ever driven. But in CarPlay mode, the touchscreen touch works. works. That's a very welcome. Which approach. makes sense, because when you're in CarPlay mode, you do need that to work, because it's hard to kind of navigate um, it's hard to navigate CarPlay without right. a touchscreen. Right. So you just swipe into your thing. That's nice. And it's a nice wide screen. The CarPlay fills the whole screen. Right. And this is the additional bigger one. So, right. but it, but it fills it up. Yeah, that's nice. Now, with the new cockpit design, you also have the screen a little bit closer to you than the CX-9 would have that's been. That's true. That's true. So, can we talk this against the CX-9 directly? Let's do it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, <laughs> Mazda, for building in 2023 a real drive-based platform. It Man. makes all the difference. Yes. And. As Dave Coleman will say, mm -hmm. in his most beautiful use of words, of we'll translate for you. If you don't understand why rear-wheel drive is better, you don't understand <laughs> driving dynamics very right, well. Right. And that's what makes the difference. You're being pushed, not pulled. Yes. The front wheels being doing steering, braking, and acceleration, that's a lot to ask. You don't need to add more to it. Right. So you take the acceleration part and put it primarily on the rear, mm -hmm. it makes a huge difference. Absolutely. Steering feel, because of that front steer situation, feels pretty good. Does I do get a little bit of feedback? I can tell, like when I hit a little bit of paint or a reflector, I can feel it in the wheel. It has something that has to do with where the motor is placed on the actual on the rack itself. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that works. And then sizing in here feels good. And man, we are on the interstate. We're doing 65 miles an hour right now. It's quiet. Quiet. It is. Wow. Yeah. Okay. With all that, I think that's all we have to say about the PHEV. Yeah. Let us know if you have any questions below. We're going to have this on loan very soon in Texas, and we'll tell you more about it there in our normal environment. Uh, but we appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time. Feel alive. Feel alive. Yeah, instead of Zoom. Oh, no more Zoom Zoom. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, still yeah. a little Zoom, you know, because you want to feel alive. I got it, I got yeah, it. Yeah, not yeah, dead. Yeah. yeah.